Hello everyone and welcome back again to the linear algebra component of the calculus and linear algebra series. In the last video we introduced this idea of the universal existential and uniqueness quantifiers and we saw what that allowed us to do is it allowed us to formalize particular statements in mathematics that we otherwise couldn't formalize in the context of propositional logic. And much like the propositional logic section where the next thing that we did is to kind of talk about the equivalence between different propositional variables we also want to talk now about the equivalence between predicative variables. But also like before, where all of the logical operators and logical connectives that we introduced in the propositional logic section could instantly be used in the first order logic section, all of the equivalences that we've proved in the propositional logic section can instantly be drawn over to the first order logic section. That is, all those equivalences that we had between propositional variables now hold as equivalences between predicative variables. So is there anything left to do, right? Have we done everything by just doing propositional logic? Well, actually, as a result of introducing these quantifiers in the last video, we saw that we introduced a new type of propositional variable. And this was because we could think of quantifiers, in some sense, as functions from predicative variables to propositional variables. So that is, we have a new type of propositional variable now that consists of predicative variables with these quantifiers. And therefore, we need to discuss equivalences between these types of propositional variables. And that leads us to our kind of first theorem now, which is also called de Morgan's laws. Uh, and it effectively says that if we've got p of x is a predicative variable, then the negation of for all x p of x is equivalent to there exists an x such that not p of x. So we're trying to prove that these two things, these two propositional variables, are in fact equivalent. So, we would normally do this by writing out a truth table, but in fact what we're going to do this time is we're going to exploit the fact that the equivalence operator we proved was in fact the same or equivalent as first proving the implication and then proving its converse. So in other words, if we start with the left-hand side, that is the negation of for all x p of x, assume that is true and prove that the right-hand side is true, then that means that the implication is true. And similarly, if we start with the right-hand side, assume that is true, prove the left-hand side is true, that will have proven that the converse is true. And combining those two together will have proven that this statement above is indeed a tautology. So let's start with that. Let's start with the left-hand side. So let's suppose not for all x p of x is true. What does that mean if we think about it? That means that there exists an x in the domain of discourse such that not p of x is true. Which, if we think about that, well, that's exactly what the right-hand side statement is of our de Morgan's laws up, up above. So, in other words, we've shown that if the left-hand side is true, the right-hand side is true, and therefore the implication is true. So, that's our first piece done. And the next piece we want to prove is we want to say, take the right-hand side to be true and prove that the left-hand side is necessarily true. Well, that's actually a little difficult to prove. So, what we'll do is we'll exploit this equivalence that we proved in a previous video between implications and contrapositives. So instead of assuming that the right-hand side is true, let's assume that the left-hand side is false. So if we've got that not for all x p of x is false, and if we can show that the right-hand side is false as a result, then we will have proven the converse, and then we will have proven the whole thing. So if not for all x p of x is false, that means for every x, p of x is true. In other words, there does not exist an x such that not p of x is true. So it does, you know, this is exactly what I've just said there, there does not exist an x such that not p of x is true. Well, we can otherwise write that as just the negation of the right-hand side. So that is to say that not uh, there exists an x such that not p of x is true true, or if I reverse that, that says that there exists an x such that not p of x is false. But that's exactly what I wanted to prove, right? I wanted to prove that if the left-hand side was false, that the right-hand side is necessarily false. And that's effectively just basically told us that we've proven the contrapositive of the converse, which is exactly what we've got here. So we've got that, the, that this statement, which is the contrapositive of the converse, is true. And because that is true, that must mean that the converse is in turn true. And therefore, we've shown that now if the right-hand side is true, the left-hand side is true. And if the left-hand side is true, the right-hand side is true. In other words, we've proven our theorem above. Now, this is a little tricky. Definitely read back over this and have a think about each individual line and, you know, read the notes as well alongside. 
But like, we need to move on to our next theorem now, which is the second De Morgan law. But this one's not going to be as tricky because we're going to be able to exploit or we're going to be able to use some of the results from the previous theorem and some of our other, other equivalences that we've deduced in order to prove this. So we've now got p of x is a predicative variable and we want to show that the negation of there exists an x p of x is equivalent to for all x not p of x. So we're trying to show that these two propositional variables are equivalent. So how are we going to do this? Well we're going to use the previous theorem so and we're also going to use some other equivalences that we've done before. So using the previous theorem we have this initial tautology. So we've got here that for all x not p of x with the if and only if not not for all x not p of x. Well that is a tautology because if I just negate the thing twice that just means basically means I'm going back to where I start. So that first one is, is a fairly obvious tautology but you can also prove that. So what's the next line that we want to do here now? Well we want to re-bracket that, we want to take one of those negations inside our propositional variables. So that gives us this thing here, right? That's just also another tautology. All we've done there is re-bracket, take one of the negations inside to our expression. And now we can use our previous theorem because let's look at this. We've got not bracket not for all x not p of x. Well we know that the negation of for all x p of x was there exists an x not p of x. So we can take that negation inside, change our for all statement to an existence uh, statement and then put a kind of not not p of x. So that is our tautology from the previous theorem that we proved before. But like we just said a minute ago, if we do a double negation, if we do not not p of x, that's the same as p of x. So in other words, that's equivalent to not there exists an x p of x. But if we look at that and we just follow chaining down all these different tautologies, we've just proven what we wanted to prove above. So that is exactly a tautology and hence we've proven our De Morgan, uh, second De Morgan law. So this one was a little bit easier but it relied upon proving some of those equivalents or using some of those equivalences that we've proven in previous videos or in, this, um, in the previous theorem. And the final thing that we want to do is we want to see well where is this going to be useful. Well, it's going to be useful when we want to actually negate particular statements. So let's look at some examples. So let's take a particular example and see if we can negate that statement using these rules. So let's start with the proposition that for every real number x there exists an integer y such that y is greater than x. So we want to write this, we want to identify what are the objects, which in this case are going to be x and y, what are the domains of discourse, well the domain of discourse of x is the real numbers and the domain of discourse of y is the integers, and what is the predicate? Well, the predicate is just y is uh, greater than x. So we can write this as for all x there exists a y such that p of x is true, where p of x is this predicate y is greater than x, and we just said what the domains of discourse are. So we've just used our quantifiers that we introduced in the previous video to recast this statement that otherwise we couldn't recast in propositional logic into this language of first order logic. So now how can we negate that well, we can negate that using our rules above, right? So let's write our, our negation there. So we've got the negation of for all x there exists a y p of x y. Well, all we do is we use our De Morgan's laws. So the first thing we do is we flip the for all statement into a, an existence statement on the x term. We flip the existence statement on the y term to a for all statement. And then we negate the predicate. So how do we translate that back into words? Well, what's that saying? That says that there exists an x or there exists a real number x such that for every integer y we have not p of x y. In other words x is greater than or equal to y. So we've got, let's just say that again in words, we've got there exists a real number x such that for every integer y it follows that y is less than or equal to x. So that's effectively just translating this statement that we negated above back into words. And this is where it's going to be particularly useful in the context of uh, predicative logic that now with this toolkit and these De Morgan's laws that we've got we can take very very complicated statements and we can negate them by just using these rules that we've got in De Morgan's laws which effectively just flipped a um, universal quantifier to an existential quantifier and an existential quantifier to a universal quantifier and also negated the predicate. So that's where we're going to finish this video now and in the final video for this week, what we're going to talk about is we're going to finish off the topic of first order logic. So very much like, please watch uh, 
read the notes on Moodle after after watching this video because this was a, a kind of had a lot of theorems in that you have to think quite deeply about. So it's very important that you watch the video, uh, read the, the notes afterwards, and also attempt some of the problems within the module handbook. So thanks again for watching, and I will see you in the next video.